Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What's a sign that a movie is going to be bad? Critics did not receive an advance screening in order to write a review. It means the studio is hoping to at least recover an opening weekend of ticket sales before word gets out. You see it more and more in the video game industry as well, where they either don't give them review copies early, only give them for a specific platform, or won't let them publish anything until a certain date. Most companies tell the reviewers there is an embargo and only after the date they can talk about it and have reviews go live. If there are multiple trailers for a comedy movie, but they use the same joke in all of them. That's actually a really great point never thought about that. When you've basically seen the entire plot of the movie and all main scenes in the trailer. All main scenes in the trailer. There was a movie years ago that became infamous because the funniest scene in the trailer wasn't in the movie. What movie? When the commercials all have one or two word reviews. And the reviews are from people IPV never heard of. Feast for the Senses William Albertso of the Topka Star Tribune Weekend Film Magazine, Online Edition. Excellent. Chris Campbell, Birabinal. Compelling. Splendid. Poignant. Riveting. These words and more have been used in sentences that have been used to describe this film. Get ready to see underscore 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 back in action in the big screen. This line is used in many bad movie trailers of old properties which are made into movies. Who left the fridge open? Tug Speedma, Scorcher 6, Global Meltdown. Here we go again again. If it's from the studio that brought you, insert decent movie here. Or from the producer, S, of. That tells you neither the actors nor the director is a selling point. From the medium that brought you Citizen Kane. Especially if it's an old movie. DreamWorks still milks Shrek. When they try adding a ill trend in the movie, it's just cringe. Even worse is when they try forcing memes into it. It's either cringe, or so outdated that it just looks stupid. The Imagey movie did both of these things. Hulk dabbing five years after it was popular, in a movie that takes place five additional years in the future. And Thor playing Fortite. Not movies necessarily but I hate it when every single TV show tried to incorporate COVID into their season. I live it every day, if I wanted to watch it on TV I'd watch the news. Or every commercial trying to sell something with COVID. In times like these. The near constant advertising. Usually the exact same spot played before every video on YouTube. So Space Jam 2. I 1000% agree with this statement. I have seen way too many fucking adverts for this movie literally everywhere. SAM's club yep. YouTube yep. Lebro himself after losing in the playoffs yep. I mean for fuck's sake. Often, they'll feature an actor way more famous than the cast, with a minor cameo, front and center on the poster. Scream used this effectively with Drew Barrymo. She was the big name and killing her off a few minutes into the movie really shook up audiences when it came out. There's a whole phenomenon with actors like Bruce Willis and Sylvester Stallo doing action movies where they have top billing, but appear only for 10 minutes. When the trailer shows you way too much. This so much. Instead of a trailer showing you a preview, it just sums up the whole movie in 30 seconds. It's like thanks I've seen it now underscore. Or it shows all the best parts worth seeing within a minute. Still mad they revealed Hulk's entrance in the Thor, Ruggerock trailer. Imagine going into the cinema not knowing Hulk is the one breaking through those doors. Edit asterisk I'm still so mad about this trailer that I completely forgot what this thread was asking. Ruggerock was definite not a bad movie. Too many trailers spoil the twist of the movie. Rise of Skywalker. F9. Just so many have done this. If my mom called to recommend it to me. I swear to god my grandma once came to tell me about this incredibly funny movie she saw on TV called Jack and Jill. Asterisk watches film. Asterisk puts grandma in a home. My mom, who knows I'm not a Christian, have you seen, low budget Christian film. It's a true story about a kid who died and went to heaven and then was revived and tells everyone god exists. It's a great movie. Then I google it and find out the kid grew up and said his father pressured him into saying all that stuff. Thanks, Mom. I'll check it out tonight. This is literally what happened with my grandma and I when I opened up on being an agnostic haha. 
exact movie and all, and I wonder if she's even aware it's fake. If it's being released in January. That isn't the case every time, just most of the time. As two wise men from Milwaukee once said, fuck you, it's January. Those hacks stole my night court tape. They intentionally sent Deadpool to February to kill it, so that's an exception. I was a broke-ass college student who lived off popcorn for a weekend because I had to see Deadpool in a crowded theater. Deadpool was a romantic love story which absolutely needed to be released on Valentine's Day weekend. Took my wife for our Valentine's date. She was mocking the idea Deadpool was going to be a romantic love story. Obviously, she was completely wrong. Deadpool has become our Valentine's Day tradition. Yup. For whatever reason, January is basically the cinematic dumping ground month. This is the reason. Httpsn.wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash Oscar underscore season. Httpsn.wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash dump underscore months. When one villain wasn't enough to make a movie, so they shoehorn in multiple half ass villains instead. Unless we get six prior movies focusing on each villain, we're never getting a good Sinister Six movie and that's very saddening. I feel like Marvel could maybe pull it off without having to have each of them have their own movie, maybe set it up over a few movies or a series or something. Although if it was just Sony calling the shots on Spider-Man they'd absolutely just chuck them all into one movie out of nowhere. It's been in production for too long. There's always a reason, for a recent example, Chaos Walking. It changed screenwriter, director and production company so many times over 10 years but was sold on it being a Charlie Kaufman movie starring Daisy Ridley and Tom Holland. Kaufman left in 2013, Ridley and Holland filmed it over years due to so many reshoots and failed screenings. Then Lyosgate said the negative reviews were shocking to them. Really. A notable exception to development hell movies being bad is Mad Max Fury Road. The Abyss and Titanic both had serious production issues and long delays. I'd actually say there's a huge difference between development hell and troubled production. Once Fury Road actually got moving they got it done. Tons of movies have been in development hell for ages and been great. I forgive all movies from 2021 to 2023 for this. <laughs> Directing credit goes to Alan Smithy. Hey. Yet the guy keeps on directing, he's the unknown artist of movies. That's because the name Alan Smithy is the union given aoimist name of screen credits. They use the name whenever an individual wishes to remove his or her name from a movie, usually because the person wishing to remove their name knows the product in question is bad and wants to avoid ruining their reputation by having their name tied to it. It's literally a big red warning sign this film is so bad the director fears people knowing they made this will make it harder for them to get future work. Has too many of what unknown critics say on the movie poster or trailer. Or the quote on the poster is like, it's great there's an entire paragraph bashing the movie cut out in between those two words. It's a movie. Not that bad. But Cisco and Egbert gave it two thumbs up. You are the Egbert. Putting a director who has no idea what the source material is about. Looking at you Drago by Evolution. Artemis Fowl was more of a dumpster fire than the Percy Jackson films. The last Airbender would like a word. Drago by Evolution is so hilariously bad that I ended up having a good time watching it. All it needed was an over-the-top Jeremy Irons to make it so bad it's good. You had James Masters as Piccolo and he had to argue why Piccolo had to be green. James Masters Aka Spike from Buffy and Bray Ayak in Smallville. He has played some great geek culture characters. I had hopes. But no, like Goku fighting forward slash killing Piccolo in Dragon Ball it left a giant hole in my chest. They said the word family 20 times in 15 minutes and it's not a movie about a mob family. It's okay, you can say fast and furious. The family and the families. It's directed by Yui Ball. It's always a good sign when a director starts challenging all of their critics to boxing matches. What's wrong, too scared to step up to the raging ball? Per second. Shaky cam and quick cut editing. Jumping over a fence. 20 quick cuts. Take it or leave it. Go damn it. Every time I see this mentioned, I'm forced to YouTube it. City of God has plenty of both and it's in my top 5. James Cord. This is the right answer. 
Why does anyone still hire him? I'm not trying to be internet petty here. I've just never encountered another human who thinks this man has an ounce of talent. Stories of his us holy abound. And yet he has a talk show and routinely gets cast in comedies and musicals. I seriously want to know if anyone sees his name on a poster and thinks so, I'll go see that because James Cord is in it. Again, not kidding at all here. If you're a Cord lover, please let me know that you exist and why you like this man. Do you think he's funny? Do you like his singing voice? What is his appeal? He was pretty good in two episodes of Drive Who. I will admit the first couple episodes of Carpool Karaoke I was charmed. But I will fully admit that was probably the actual celebs and the concept. Every time there is a question on here about which celebrity is an asshole his name gets dropped more than once. 